Yo, what's up guys, it's Trev here again. This one's gonna be an interesting video, highly controversial, I guarantee it, but this is going to be uh, my list uh, for whom I believe are the 10 uh, best fighters in the world. So in other words, if you took every professional fighter, every man on the, on the planet, and you had them face in mortal combat, who would be the top 10 best fighters in the world? Who would be you know, left standing in the top 10? Um, so this is not you know, restricted to MMA, although it, well, it's going to be just MMA, basically, because mixed martial arts is the closest thing to fighting there is. It is basically uh, real fighting, essentially, you know, in a word. Um, so this is going to be my list or my top 10 list of who I believe the top 10 toughest men in the world are, or best fighters in the world are. Um, before we jump right into it, um, this is a highly controversial topic. Um, there's going to be a lot of speculation in this video. There's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, my thoughts, and uh, you guys can contribute, of course, as well. Um, now, this is not a pound for pound list, okay? Pound for pound, th the way that that term is used gets thrown around like it's stupid. The way the the, the word gets uh, thrown around. This list is not just heavyweights, okay? This list is who I believe are the ten toughest guys in the world. You put them all together, you make everybody fight. Um, who are the te are the ten best, okay? Um, so it's not a pound for pound list. I want to get that out of the way first. Now, with that in consideration, um, obviously the higher you go up in weight, you know, the tougher the guys are. You know what I mean? You go up to heavyweight, these guys can end a fight with one punch. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, obviously, and, and the guys who train with them know, professional fighters know that when you fight a guy way bigger than you, just like Fedor fighting Bigfoot, you know, um, it obviously the weight and the size makes a difference, okay? So that's what this is going to be, you know. Let me hear your thoughts, uh, you know, before I start. Just if you have any thoughts on your list, please post your list below and, uh, you know, let me know what you think about this. So let's get started. Let's get right down into it. So before we get into the top 10, we're going to do some honorable mentions. Anderson Silva, of course, okay? has to have an honorable mention. He was very close to making my list, but the reason why he didn't is because he fights at 185. He weighs about 220, 230 uh, when he's, you know, off and he's, uh, you know, he can fight at 205. Can he fight at heavyweight? He, he can fight at heavyweight if he doesn't cut down at all. Um, so, you know, if he fights at his highest weight, you know, in his best shape, that kind of stuff, I'm sure he would do extremely well. Um, how would he do against some of the heavyweight guys? You know, uh, I don't know if he'd do very well. Chael Sonnen was able to take him down at will. It wasn't a problem. How would he fare against Brock Lesnar? How would he fare against uh, Cain Velasquez, against, uh, you know, some of the great wrestlers? He wouldn't do very well. So he was close to making the list, but not on the list, okay? Because he would be beaten by these heavyweight guys. That's my belief, all right? Um, also close to the list, uh, George St. Pierre, but he's way too light. I mean, he weighs 170. Is he going to be able to beat a guy who weighs 280, 290? Uh, you know, a lot of them, yeah, but top 10 heavyweights, no, he's not going to be able to do that. Um, there, you know, there are limitations, okay? When a guy is that much stronger than you, you know, like Shane Carmen, is he going to be able to take Shane Carmen down? No. You know, what's going to happen? He's going to get knocked out. That's all there is to it. Um, so he's not going to be on the list either. So let's start with number 10. Uh, number 10 uh, is John Jones, Johnny Bones Jones. So, of course, you know, he's got to be up there because this guy is a guy that fights at 205, but he could easily go up to uh, heavyweight and fight, you know, at 230, 240, and beat I think he definitely beat a lot of the guys in the heavyweight division in the UFC and strike force you know he's an amazing fighter um, he's gonna dominate the 205 division I think for a while uh, he can take guys down it very easily he can he's got some nasty ground and pound with his elbows good stand up you know um, so that's number 10 John, Johnny Bones Jones um, for the 10 uh, toughest number nine we're gonna go over to um, Golden Glory, we're going to go over to Sergey Kartanov. Um, so we just saw him knock out Andrei Arlovsky. Uh, he's been a fierce competitor for years and years and years. Uh, he's in the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix and doing you know very well in that. Got out of the first round without a scratch, basically. I'm um, going to be facing the winner of uh, Josh Barnett and um, Brett Rogers pretty soon. So he definitely deserves to, to be up there. You know, uh, an amazing kickboxer, you know, a powerhouse. Um, kind of like Fedor, but bigger and uh, maybe not as dynamic with hands, but still can knock anybody out and is a great, you know, all around fighter. So that's number nine, Sergey Kartanov. Number eight, we're going to go to uh, Shane Carwin. So Shane Carwin is a fighter that, um, you know, he's had some problems with his back lately, he had some problems with conditioning, but before that fight with Brock Lesnar, he was undefeated. You know, he went on a tear, he knocked out Frank Mir, he knocked out, I mean, he was knocking out everybody, Gonzaga, I mean, 
this guy is exciting. You know, watching Shane Carwin is, you know, it's just amazing. Great wrestler, you know, uh, poses, prob poses problems for anybody because you can't really take the guy down, at least not when he's, when he's uh, you know, not gassed. If he's, if he's not gassed, you can't take this guy down. Uh, even if you're Brock Lesnar, you can't take this freaking guy down. You know, um, so he, you're going to be forced to stand with him. And he is, he has got power in his hands, man. Um, so he's getting back to be healthy again. He should be fighting soon against some guy I'd never heard of, uh, Olav or something. Apparently the guy's a really good grappler, so we'll see how that turns out. But number eight, Shane Carr. With number seven, um, I think you guys probably think that I would put him higher on this list, but I don't. And there's a reason for it. That is Brock Lesnar. Number seven, Brock Lesnar. Um, why is he not higher on the list? Well, because I don't think he's going to beat Junior Dos Santos. If he proves me wrong, then excellent. You know, um, how would he fare against some of the other guys? Uh, you know, uh, higher up in the list. I don't think he would do very well. He's a one-dimensional fighter. He takes guys down. He pounds on them. He uses his weight. He uses his wrestling. That's what he does. His stand-up sucks. Okay, so he's going to get knocked out by any of the, these guys above him in this list. Um, he could get submitted by, you know, some of these guys in this list. Um, you know, Brock Lesnar, number seven. I don't know what else to say other than that. Number six, we're going to go to uh, Bigfoot Silva, Antonio Bigfoot Silva. Is he higher than Brock? Yes, he's higher than Brock. Could Brock take him down? Yeah, but he'd probably get submitted if he did. Antonio Bigfoot Silva is a monster. His boxing is good. You can't knock this guy out. This guy's chin is ridiculous. I mean, he has been knocked out once, I think, but this guy is a monster. We just saw him, you know, killing Fedor, basically. It was just disgusting. He was the Elite XC heavyweight champion. Uh, this guy, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, re his wrestling is really good. He, you know, he's been able to take guys down and just fucking ground and pound the hell out of these guys. It's just been, it's been brutal to watch Bigfoot fight some of these guys, the way he, he's manhandled them and just... Uh, demolish them. Exciting to see where he's going to go. He could move up and down, you know, um, depending on how he fights in his next uh, few fights. Let's see in the, in the heavyweight tournament, but uh, definitely Bigfoot Silva deserves to be there above Brock, in my opinion, and above all the others. Uh, just, a, you know, a monster of a man and not someone that is easy for anybody to fight. You know, um, he has no weaknesses. None. So, you know, he definitely deserves to be there. Not like Brock, where he has some significant weak weaknesses. Bigfoot does not. Um, moving up then, we're going to go to Fabricio Verdum, uh, number five. So why is Verdum on this? Well, he just beat Fedor. Okay, He's going to be facing Reem, and he could upset Reem in that fight, although I don't think he will. Uh, it, it is possible. Um, he's got the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in uh, the world, basically, in MMA. Uh, he's got the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu of anybody. He's huge. He's a monster. He's six foot four, two hundred sixty-five pounds. He doesn't look big, but he's huge. The guy's a, the guy's a massive man. You know, not easy to knock out. Although he has been knocked out by JDS before, um, but a lot of people were saying he wasn't in shape for that fight and that kind of stuff. And uh, I believe that. I don't think he was either. He had some problems with the UFC as well. Uh, with being paid and shit. They didn't want to pay him shit. So anybody who says that he was cut because he sucked, that's not true. He got cut because he wanted more money and they wouldn't pay him. That's all there is to it. Um, an amazing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Sort of like Nogueira at this time. You know what I mean? When Nogueira was in his prime, he's like Ver Verdum now. You know what I mean? Verdum's boxing is great. He beat B Bigfoot Silva, so obviously he's got to be ahead of him. Uh, you know, just just an amazing fighter overall. Um, I don't know what else to say about uh, Verdum, man. You know, um, triangle choke. There you go. Triangle choke. Uh, Vai Cavallo, two and one. There you go. Uh, number four, Junior Dos Santos. I mean, of course, you got to have Junior Dos Santos up there. The guy's a monster. The guy's hands are brutal, man. He knocks out almost everybody. I mean, the way he knocked out Verdum. If you guys haven't seen JDS's knockout of Verdum, won't you please not be a fool and go look that up and watch his knockout of Verdum? It was one of the most amazing knockouts I've ever seen. He uppercuts the guy from hell, and Verdum just sits right down. It was amazing. It was an amazing knockout. Um, Junior Santos, I think he'll beat Brock, and I think he'll be right up in there for the um, heavyweight uh, title in the UFC. And you know, close to the top of this list. I don't think he'll ever be number one, though, regardless, unless Strike Force and UFC combine. Let's get into that after. Number three, uh, now I know some of you guys are going to disagree with, with me on this one, but I firmly believe this. Number three has to be Josh Barnett. Okay, um, Josh Barnett fighting in Strike Force, you know, been a UFC heavyweight champion in the past, um, been fighting all along basically in smaller organizations, Hate basically hates Dana White, and Dana White hates him. You know what I mean? He, will he ever be in the UFC? I don't know. I don't know if he will be. Maybe if he wins a Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix. Otherwise, um, I don't think we'll see him in the UFC again. I mean, the guy, the guy got caught for steroids a few times, so obviously he was juicing. But um, 
doesn't take away from anything. The guy is an amazing wrestler, okay? As good a wrestler as Brock Lesnar, as good a wrestler as any of these other guys for MMA. Um, got got submissions too, you know, is, you know, got good stand-up. I mean, Josh Barnett, you know, he deserves to be up there. If he was to fight any of these guys below him, I would pick him. I would pick him over Junior Dos Santos. Why? Because I think he'd probably take him down, and I think his stand-up is good enough to avoid JDS's stand-up. How would he do against Verdum? Well, I think he'd take Verdum down and be able to avoid the submissions. Bigfoot, same. You know, Josh Barnett is an amazing fighter, so he definitely deserves to be number three. Number two, um, how could I create a list without this guy on it? Um, the UFC heavyweight champion, Cain Velasquez. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys thought he was going to be number one, um, but I firmly believe that if he was to fight the number one guy, uh, he would not be successful at it. Uh, Cain Velasquez has uh, some significant strengths over anybody. His gas tank is better than anyone's. Um, he has an awesome chin. You know, when he's fighting Czech Congo, he just ate Czech Congo's punches and just went right through him. Just walked right in, like, walked right into him, ate the punches, and just kept on walking forward. It was uh, like the Terminator, man, like like uh, you know, like a cyborg. He just freaking just keeps going, you know, and he's got a gas tank like you, you wouldn't believe. He hits hard. He hits harder than he used to. He's really worked on his uh, strength a lot, and he hits hard, man. He really does hit hard. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, number two, Cain Velasco is the UFC heavyweight champion. Uh, as soon as he gets better, um, it'll be nice to see him defend his title against the winner of JDS and Brock Lesnar, um, which I think he will successfully defend. So that moves us to number one. Who could be number one on the list of the ten greatest fighters in the world? Um, well, number one is probably a guy now, I know probably a lot of you guys are going to disagree with me, but this is my opinion, and this is what I believe. Um, number one is essentially... The best stand-up fighter in the world um, just won the K1 World Grand Prix 2010. Is the uh, Dream Heavyweight Champion? Is the Strike Force Heavyweight Champion? And has been undefeated for years. That is the monster, the Juggernaut himself, Alistair Overeem, the Reem. I mean, you know, how can you not put this guy at the top of the list, in my opinion? He's the best stand-up fighter in the world. Uh, if you saw him fight Todd Duffy, Todd Duffy was supposed to be the next up-and-coming thing in the UFC. He got kicked out of the UFC because they didn't like his attitude. He messed up sometimes, and he didn't, you know, do things exactly right. But he's a tough-ass guy, man. Heavyweight, young, up-and-comer, you know, uh, needed to win that fight against uh, Overeem, or else his career is basically over. And it sounds like at this point it might be over. Um... He came at the Ream, and the Ream beat him in 19 seconds. You know, he tried to take him down uh, with shoes on. Keep in mind, with shoes on. And why does that matter? Well, anybody, if you have to ask the question of why does, you know, being able to wear shoes when you're trying to wrestle and take someone down matter, then you shouldn't be watching this video. You should know right off the bat. If you're wearing shoes and you're trying to take someone down versus someone, you know, wearing having bare feet on, um, that's an advantage, okay? That's a huge advantage because your leverage and your grip on the mat will help you take that guy down. He couldn't take him down. He tried to take him down. You know, he just got shrugged off, pushed off. You know, a knee to the left, uh, a left hand, and then a right hook, and he tags him, and it's over. Alistair Overeem, man. I mean, what can you say about this guy? The guy's a monster. Okay, the guy's probably one of the strongest guys in the heavy in out of all these guys. Um, you know, he's strong enough to shrug off Brock. I believe he's strong enough, definitely strong enough to shrug off Kane. Uh, and how would he do against Kane? I mean. In my opinion, he would knock Kane in the next week. Okay, Kane thinks his stand-up is good or whatever. Nobody's stand-up is good compared to the Ream. Any of you guys, if you want to say that Junior Dos Santos' boxing is anywhere close to the Reams, get the hell out of here. I'm not going to respond to your comments. If you try to tell me that Junior Dos Santos' boxing is anywhere close to the Ream, I'm not going to respond to you, and I might even block you just because you're an idiot. Um, Alistair Overeem is the best stand-up fighter in the world. He also has tons of MMA uh, experience. Um, been fighting his whole life now at a heavyweight, um, just a monster, it's just just an absolute monster. I mean, you know, who can beat this guy? Could Kane take him down? I don't think so. Um, I think he's going to get knocked out. So I got to put Alistair Overeem at number one. Um, until he loses, I think he's the best in the world, the number one heavyweight in the world, just like Boss Rutten says. Alistar Overeem. That's my list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what do you think. Who do you think are the ten best fighters in the world? This is Trev saying peace out later, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't.